we blew we blew the Wi-Fi. All right, we're back. Well, tomorrow night is the anniversary of the beat. February 9th. Today's the eighth. Today's a number nine day. Tomorrow's February 9th. The Beatles played at Ed Sullivan in New York City tomorrow. 1964. Wow, so that's a lot. <laughs> what is that, 60 years? 64? How many years is that? I'm not going to tell you. Well, if this is 2020, you're terrible at this and so am I. But no, we shouldn't be. We shouldn't be this terrible at it. 2024. So 1964, 74, 84, 94, 2004, 2004, 60 years. We're talking 60, right? Yeah, I, I'm going to say yeah. All right, listen. This is what's going on. Mm. You know, it took me a minute, but that's what's happening. All right, John, what do you got going here with this pan? All right, you're going to put a little tamari in there. You might want to use two hands for that. All right. Tamari with the oil? Yeah. Why don't we do it in the room? You should have sang that song. Yeah, well. Should have sang all of them, right? No, not all of them, but that one. What, actually, what am I talking about? Paul sings that song great. Why don't we do it? Why don't we do it? Mm. Paulie's like a big schlemiel, isn't he, with that kind of singing? Mm. He is at that. What do you What do you got me making here? Show it. Ugh. You're not that tired. I, you think you're more tired than you are. Just get your get your ruler blades going, and all right. We're making, this is a veggie burger. You believe this is a veggie burger? This is a raw veggie burger. It's even got the weird little knobs in it, like grizzle. Mm. The fuck is that all about? I don't think that's a good thing to do with veggie burgers. What's that? Put raw little weird knobs in it. I think it encourages people to go back to the other way of, of eating. Meaning meat eaters, right. <laughs> I know this is bothering you because your beautiful face is not showing. Yeah, let's just get some stuff off the table. How's this? You tell me, Skippy. Oh. You get as fed up as I do with this setup bullshit, don't you? Mm -hmm. It's horrifying. Yeah. Christ. So what are you calling this today, this meal? Mmm. Burger on the half shell. That doesn't make any sense. All right. So now you got a little tamari, a little uh, almond oil in the pan, and and some chopped onion. Yes. So now you're throwing in the meat. All right. Okay. You're giving yourself more problems than you need. All right. Well, the meat got kind of soggy. It looks, it's like regular hamburger meat, isn't it? It's nice to know that it's not. I used to do a lot of hands-on mushing hamburger meat in my life. I feel very guilty about it now. You can even eat this stuff raw, I think. Mm. Yeah. It's like a pea protein and all kinds of shit like that. Why don't we do it? Why don't we do it? So we're frying it up now. Okay, give yourself a little garbage container here. This will be it. Fine. A story about a horse? A story about a horse? What kind of horse? What the, what's going on with this? Hold on, because I got things going in here and I can't hear anything. So Chris just told us a story about a guy with a horse, a guy in Indiana, and the horse loves wearing this robot costume. Mm. Why did they originally put a robot costume on him? Do you know? The guy had some job where he was involved in making costumes, and he wanted to just, he made a costume for his horse, just intending to get a couple of pictures. Right, and 
And the horse is now in love with his costume. Yes. And he does not let... I'm just relaying this now on, on my right. on my video. The horse is now in love with his costume, and he will not let them remove it. Mm -hmm. We are going to have to get a picture of that and put it on our page. Because mm -hmm. that sounds like... Sounds like a photo op to me, it's just, which is why the the guy originally got the costume for the horse. But now I guess he, did, he didn't plan on the horse not ever wanting to take it off. Amazing, right. amazing. Well, you know, it might be the kind of thing where you know, like dogs get attached to wearing a t-shirt, like those thunder shirts. Like, listen, I'll tell you one thing: animals are very smart. They know what they like. Whatever that horse's psychology is, that ha costume made him happy. Mm. And now he doesn't want to take it off. I don't blame him. I really don't blame him. Sounds like a good costume. I can't wait to see the pictures of it, really. Mm. I shared it on my Facebook show. Oh, okay, excellent. I'm gonna look that up and mm -hmm. look at that. All right, so we have now what, what's looking like scrambled eggs and, and sausage, right? Mm. Daddy, would you like some sausage? Yeah, like what's his name? Tom Green. Mm. Daddy, would you like some sausage? Daddy, would you like some sausage? Okay, so we'll take a picture of this. I'm not doing so well, honey. You know, stretch the body. It's the only thing we can do. All right, so we have, that looks beautiful, really. And all we're gonna do with this is just have, make some toast. Mm -hmm. Simple, thank you for keeping it nice and simple for me today. Uh, that's the way it goes. Simple for my baby. A simple man. Yeah, you are. You, you, you like your, 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 your simple stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I, I noticed that. Well, it comes from a simple Irish stock, you know? The, the lemons and the, what was the, I'm going to see if you remember. Rogers? Was your, was, it was, no, Mimi Rogers is an actress. What were the girls' names? Julia? Oh, Mimi. I know Mimi's married name, Mimi Smith. What the hell was Julia? Oh, I'm not going to tell you. You know, you're just doing this to make me feel like a vegetable. What was John's maiden mother's name? Mm. Mother's maiden name. Stanley. Right. Julia and Mimi Stanley. I remember. I tell you. I'm no fool. This looks beautiful, Johnny. Now we're gonna do toast in the in the in the pan too. We're gonna make garlic toast. Alright. I can dig it. Right, this is really nice looking um, thing here. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. See, now I'm feeling calm. Because mm. I don't have to do anything else. Well, if you want to take... Well, I'm just going to bring the bread back into the bread... Into the bread room. Into the bread room. Mm. For the birds. Giving them white Italian bread today. Because the one bird is looking Italian to me. Does he look? Does not one bird look Italian? He does. He's like eat pizza crusts or something the other day. She's lying. I'm not lying. That that bird looked Italian to me. You want to name him Paisan? Yeah. Paisan the pirate. Pirate the Paisan. Right. Pirate is a paisan. So you're telling me that the bird that you named Pirate from the get-go has been an Italian bird all along? That's what I'm telling you. How do you feel about that? How should I feel about it? I like Italian people. There's nothing wrong with them. Oh, JP is here. Hi, JP. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I love Italian people. Italian people are great. JP, uh, he's my old friend, John Party, John Forcina. Mm. He used to run a pizza place, yeah. And I used to go in there every day, practically, in the winter time. 
play my guitar for him and the customers. Um, Wild Horses, Lena. Play Wild Horses. That was his favorite. Mm. Child, baby. And, uh, I'm asking him a personal question now. He's telling me don't go there. Were you connected? Were you, John, were you, was your family? Let me tell you something about the Italians, Lynn. Yeah. And I think you already know the answer. Mm hmm We're all connected. Mm hmm no, you're connect your father was connected. Yeah, right. And he wasn't Italian. Right. Yeah, right. Mm. Don't get scared. You can talk about it. Yeah, my biological father. Hmm. Boy, we're hitting on them today. And I just sent them some sh nice sugar free candy for Valentine's Day. Mm. I like sending them presents lately. Mm. Why do you think that is? Why do you think it is? I, I feel drawn to do it because you're a sweet, beautiful girl. And you just want them to be happy. It's as simple as that. You're not doing anything bad. You still care. And everybody keeps going out of their way to tell me horrible stories. Not horrible stories. But just explanatory stories. Because people tend to... You know, why does this woman never talk to her parents anymore? Because it's too damaging. She can't do it because it's not good for her health. But she sends them gifts regularly. I'd say about once a month now for the past year or so. I do. Just little things. A pretty crucifix or a, or a candy. I like sending sugar-free candy. Because then they won't get diabetic like Ted Whitting, who died, hmm. Chris's father. If he would have been eating um, sugar free candy, he'd still be alive. Hmm. Diabetes, God. My grandfather died of diabetes. I think he was looking at amputation and then he opted to. Pretty much kill himself in the hospital. Mm. Pulled out a pacemaker. Went into cardiac arrest, I believe. Mm. Hi, Grandpa. Mm. How much is preventable? Are you asking me that? Yeah, how much do you think is preventable of these life paths? Well, in those days, it was very difficult because there were no really healthy options. Not really. And you yourself know, this is my granddad. This is my grandfather on my mother's side, Grandpa. Hi, Grandpa. <laughs> so you know better than anyone um, how addictions play into lifestyle and you know you know I was a drinker and you know my appetite for rich foods and uh, at the end when I was taking care of nanny my grandmother got pretty early onset Alzheimer's she was in her late 60s right which is early I thought for So I was busy taking care of Nanny, and I really didn't have a lot of time to think about myself. And I didn't choose that life path, but it chose me. Hmm. So when you were on the other side, how much were you in control of when you came down here as, you know, Louis Kimmel? How much were you in control? I was destined to meet a woman and your grandmother was my twin flame mm -hmm. is my twin flame uh, Magdalena yes Lena yes the other Lena 
Right, right. I don't mean to forget her. It's all right. You're remembering her now. My grandfather is always very protective of my grandmother. And I remember sometimes, you know, she would be talking to herself because she really, you know, was in another space. And we were still really young. And me and my brother, Alan, used to go over to their house here in Richmond Hill while my mother was giving my grandmother a bath. Um, and we would hear my grandmother screaming, get off of me, who are you? You know, to her daughter, get off of me, who are you? Don't touch me, screaming in the bathtub. I don't want to be here, don't look at me, get away. What do you want? Stop, stop. And, um, you know... It was very scary. She really had a loud scream. Hysterical, you know. And when she was well, she was like really a kind woman, very soft-spoken and sweet. So all we knew was that she would just be having these, you know, this change. She was not the same. She wasn't the same nanny. But then when she would be, like, come out and, like, everybody maybe would be having tea or something and it wasn't no longer bath time and I would sit and, talk and like, let her talk to me and she would just be not looking at me but just, like, telling me about all the people that she was talking to. She held my hand and she would say, oh, you know, and this one is doing this. And, and I thought, gee, she really is seeing, you know, something else. She's seeing something. Is that, even if it's in her mind, like, but I, as a child, I, you know, I was like eight or something. I mean, that, and she lived a long time. She lived until I was 13 in that condition, you know. And she started in that condition when I was maybe five. So, uh, I don't know, it's hard to keep track and it's hardly really matters. But I like knew, like, wow, she's seeing something other people don't see. And it's real to her. So why, how, why is it not real? Like everyone's saying, oh, she's not in reality. And yes, she is, but she's in her reality now. And hardening of the arteries will bring that about. Bad food choices, for sure. Prevents blood flow to the brain. That's all meat and animal products. Mm. Too much fat in your diet. Mm. High cholesterol, undiagnosed, will will bring about, you know, early onset dementia. Just because your brain's not getting the oxygen, you know. They weren't big on exercise, my grandparents. But I remember Alan one time, my grandfather was walking through the room, and my grandmother was saying something to one of her uh, so-called imaginary visions oh yes I know what of course yes 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 she would be having these whole conversations and say I never said that to her I never did she's lying I tell you and she had a lot of these kind of stories in her mind because my mother told me later she always she had a thing about people disrespecting her or looking down on her even though she was a fine lady, but it was just like she had it like, don't you fucking look down on me or talk I know you're talking about me. So she was like that when she was well, like, oh, this one, she thinks she's such, such and such. And she looks down on me for some reason because maybe I'm heavy and she's got a better figure. And, you know, my grandmother was really obsessed with stuff like that. And she was having this kind of conversation in the living room at my grandfather and her at their apartment. And 
I was fascinated, but my brother Alan started making jokes like an idiot, like, haha, she's like, uh, she's crazy or something like that, you know, like, whoa, she's, and he starts like kind of imitating her. That was the only time I thought my grand, my grandfather would never have hit us, never in a million years, but he looked murderous and he screamed like a low scream, but it was loud. You shut your mouth! <laughs> you rotten kid! We were shocked, but I was thinking to myself, good for you. Stupid idiot. So it's good to talk to you guys. Anything else you wanted to say besides what I'm hearing you say right now? They know you forgive them. Mm -hmm. And that's the important thing. And there's nothing to say anymore. Because there never was anything to say. Not about that. Nothing that anyone could say would ever have made that right. All of it. And the only thing left was for you to show them your forgiveness. And you have done that. And you're a good girl. Thanks, Nanny. That was the first thing Nanny said to me. I went to a psychic when Chris was uh, diagnosed with cancer. I went to a psychic to learn about healing. I wanted to learn more about how I could become an energy healer. And that's how I got on the path to tarot and Reiki, Reiki and, and everything, you know, was my desire to heal Chris or be instrumental in doing it. And the first thing this psychic, Cynthia, her name was, out on Long Island, the first thing she said to me, and, and that I knew it was real, was, your grandmother is here. And she's saying, you're a good, that's Lena. She's the other Lena. And she's a good, she's such a good girl. And no one called me Lena. But John, so I knew, and and I knew it was my grandmother because her name was Magdalena, and my grandfather called her Lena. And then the psychic told me all kinds of crazy things that were true, and that came true. Mm -hmm. And I, people were like, I, and I saw her a couple more times and each time it was more like a refresher course about, about uh, you know, I'm learning tarot now. And it was more just like having conversations about being psychic. <clears throat> and, um, she's still doing really good. She's a successful psychic on Long Island. She's not that other Long Island psychic on television. She's a real psychic. She really helps people. I mean, I don't know. Does the television one help people? She seems more into it for, like, the glamour, but I could be wrong. John? Well, everyone's psychic. Yeah, right. You know, and I've always said that to you. Lena, everybody has the gift. But whether or not they choose to use it, and then once they ha have access to it uh, via the way you did... Uh, meditation, prayer, Reiki, all those channels opening up for you. Um, then, of course, there's uh, how they're going to use it for good. Mm -hmm. Because some of them just go in and they say, I'm going to become the richest psychic who ever lived. And those are the ones where the problems come in and the dark entities come in. And that's why the first thing I told Lena... When I came through in 2013 was you must not no longer charge money. If you want to help people, 
I'll help you with the readings. I've been helping you all along. You know that now. I'll help you with the readings, but you can you may no longer charge money to do God's work. So, but that woman, Cynthia, well, that's her path. She chooses to make money, and a lot of it. But, all I'll say is let's hope she protects herself properly and she's not your concern. But she did help you a great deal at the time. She did. There are good psychics out there, good people. And if it's our only, uh, and you know what? If making, if this was your only way of making money, God would advise you accordingly. Uh, you did make some money at it for a while until you, know, you don't need the money now. So, you know, right, they, it coincided. John coming back coincided with me suddenly getting a disability settlement and everything came together at once and I really didn't. I never liked charging people money for it anyway. Honest to God, I didn't really like it. It felt weird and like, mm, Right, because you're a woman of God, and you knew you were doing God's work, and it seemed weird to you, and that, and and as well it should. And right away, Lena stopped charging immediately. I said, "Boy, she really listens now that she now that she hears me. She really listens. Yeah, mm. it's amazing. I bet if I tell her to walk around on the on the uh, edge of the rooftop, she'd do it." I probably would have if I could have gotten up there. <laughs> no, I don't think I would have. No, I would never ask you to do it. But it was that kind of faith and devotion and trust in me that means a lot, continues to mean a lot to me every, every moment that we're together. Anyway, it's only a good show. Let's get uh, the show on the road. You made a real, you want to show the, the, the finished product? Finished product. Well, that's just well, that's the garlic bread on top of the uh, sausage and egg. All right. Look at you cooking all this fucking crap. And then you want to make you want to put some greens in a bowl, right? Yeah. We'll just grab a bowl of greens and that's it. All right. Greens and grains. Hi, guys. Hey. Yeah, your grandparents trying to get through, you know. Yeah, I, I sense that. Mm. I'm sorry for ignoring... No, it's not that you're ignoring them. They're very quiet and they leave you to your own life. But they wanted to come through and say that they loved you. And also that they they appreciate very much you being kind to your biological parents. It means a lot to them. Good. 